Uh, all right, Nabil, it's all yours. All right, good morning, greetings, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much for being with here on a frigid Saturday morning by Georgia standards uh, anyway. Um, we're here today to celebrate. What are we celebrating? We are celebrating the manifestation of the vision of the ISB Leadership Institute embodied in you all. What is the vision of ISBLI? To be the premier leadership development program for cultivating competent and effective civic leaders from within the diverse communities of Georgia. And I would say, having gotten updates about your progress, knowing who you are, seeing what you've accomplished and being here today, we are accomplishing and manifesting that vision. So as you all know, service to others is the rent you pay here for your room on earth is the quote that we refer to frequently from Muhammad Ali. We're here to celebrate your service. We're here to celebrate your efforts. And we're here to celebrate the potential that you will unleash on your respective communities. As you all know, an event like this is a celebration of everything you've done, but it's just the beginning. And now we, you get the burden of our expectations, of our aspirations for you, of our feelings of hope for everything that you will accomplish and will continue to accomplish. Leadership and service go hand in hand together. And what you all have shown is that the vision of leadership, the future of leadership from our communities is strong and is full of potential. Look, these are challenging times. There's a lot going on here in Georgia and Atlanta, but around the world as well. These things weigh heavily on us. Many of us have experienced personal challenges that we may not have even shared with our co-classmates, our co-workers, our families in some cases. And my hope is that through this program, we first have learned how to sharpen the knife a little bit, sharpen that knife, that tool that is yourself, mentally, spiritually, maybe physically, and then take that tool and cut through the problems we have ourselves, but also the issues our communities deal with locally and eventually have a global impact. So thank you so much for everything you've done. I'm, I'm excited to hear your presentations and on half of the ISB board of directors, and I would say the entire community of Atlanta, welcome to the cohort of ISBLI fellows. Thank you, Nabil. Uh, let us uh, offer a prayer. Let's get us started. With the name of God, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer, the God of the universe and of all of us, the creator, the sustainer, the God and evolve of all worlds, we pray that you continue to bless and reward and guide these graduates. Bless them to be beacons of faith, of knowledge, of inspiration, and of service. We ask you to guide them and to guide us to bless this ISBLI to, in, to in, continue to invest in souls and character and intellect and potential of outstanding people and leaders. Oh God, we ask you to help these graduates to see and to exemplify that leadership and power is not really in physical statue or possessions or traditions or muscle, um, certainly not in manipulation or deceit, but leadership and influence is in truth, knowledge, 
intelligence, understanding, sincerity, compassion, effort, service, commitment, and faith. We ask that you protect them and protect us, empower them and empower us, relieve them and relieve us, purify our hearts, clarify our thoughts, engage our hands and bless this graduation to be an answer to our prayers, to empower this town, this city, this country, this world with more uh, future and present leadership that can take us into a world of peace and compassion. In your name we pray, I mean. Thank you, Ben Um Wow, this is such a, a beautiful day, a day that we've been looking forward to for, for a long time and it's here. Um, Hiba just put a message on, on chat saying this is bittersweet our last time together as a class, but uh, just look at the accomplishment. We're just all so, so proud of you. And it really takes a village. It takes a village to be where we're at today. Um, I can't thank the ISB board enough for their support, for their commitment uh, with the leadership of uh, Dr. Nabil Stafdar, Imam Fleeman, and many others. Can't thank our advisory council that helps us be where we at and Ann Kramer is representing our advisory council. Can thank our, thank our uh, coaches enough. And we have Coach Mahreen and Coach Muzaffar here. Um, can't thank our faculty enough. Uh, we have Amir, we have Rita, we have Terry here, but it's really, it's really a village. Uh, all our guest speakers who were so gracious to be here uh, with us throughout this whole nine month and share their time and their knowledge and their passion. Um, it's just, we're, we're grateful. We're grateful to each and every one of you for bringing us to where we are. And the class of 2022, you all have um, worked hard and here you are really uh, reaping the, uh, the fruit of your labor and love and time and commitment and going through trials. And I know this has not been an easy, uh, easy class. And I just saw that Kim Carswell is here as well. So Kim, thank you so much for being here. She's our latest faculty addition uh, and just brought so much to the table this, this time around. So welcome. So just a bunch of gratitude, uh, all the family who are here to support our graduates, yay, yay, yay. Uh, we might also have people from prior uh, classes. So thank you so much for joining us. And the class of 2022, will be joining the class of 2020 and 2019. Uh, and we have close to, I think 50 or 60 people uh, who are uh, here will be part of the cohorts from all those three classes and we're growing. And we started out as a, as a Muslim focused uh, leadership institute. And now we are just spread throughout the different communities and we're very excited and we're very thankful. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna now turn it over to our friend, colleague, supporter, couldn't have done this without you, Tara McDuffie from Kennesaw State University. And Tara, where are you? Right here, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Samaya. Um, my name is Tara McDuffie and I am the executive director um, for the Division of Global Affairs at Kennesaw State University. I'm so glad to be a part of today's graduation ceremony, a culmination of all of your hard work and dedication over the last 10 months is finally here. And I'm sure that you would agree that it was worth it. You are not the person that you were 10 months ago when you first started this program. You are more reflective and have new perspectives, more knowledgeable about who you are and your potential. And more importantly, I hope, more empowered about your path forward. The Division of Global Affairs is proud to be a partner of the Islamic Speakers Bureau and contribute to the Leadership Institute program. As Kennesaw State University's international arm, as you can imagine, we focus on everything global. Our goal is to facilitate global partnerships, support our international population, and coordinate programming at home and abroad that prepares students 
for success in today's increasingly global environment. We send almost a thousand students abroad each year to learn about the world around them, but we have an end goal, which is to create life-changing opportunities which will ultimately teach them about themselves and the impact that they can have in their own communities. Our partnership with the Islamic Speakers Bureau is a natural fit because although our paths may be different, many of our objectives are the same. Building bridges, providing alternative narratives and leadership development are cornerstones for affecting change. And I applaud you for taking such a huge step to becoming effective civic leaders and advocates to create more inclusive communities. Over the last 10 months, it's been exciting to hear about how all of you have been coming along in the program or the wonderful speakers that you've had. Not just that, to hear the positive feedback that you've had on the content that you were receiving or the thought provoking conversations that you've had as a group. Your engagement is a testament to your commitment to the program and your investment in your personal and professional development. I'm thrilled that you decided to take part in this program. This is one step of many that you will take on your journey to being more engaged citizens. And I'm honored that the Division of Global Affairs has been able to be a part of your story. I also want to express gratitude to the entire ISBLI team for developing such a well-organized, relevant and impactful program. Your tireless effort to make a difference is inspiring. Thank you allowing us to be, for allowing us to be a part um, of this program, your partner, and we support the wonderful work that you are doing and continue, or at least I hope, that we can continue to be partners as we move forward. Thank you, everyone, and congratulations. Thank you, Tara. Tari? Thank you so much, Tara. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so now we have, um, we're going to invite the planning team, which is myself and the Somaya, um, to give our observations on ISBLI 2022 on this group of, um, of uh, fellows that are, are graduating. So I'll begin first. Um, and of course, Samaya will always complete my sentences and expand because we're like operating in the same thought space. But uh, this group, my goodness, this is this has been the full pandemic ISBLI cohort. This cohort began in the midst of the, the pandemic itself. You know, the first cohort was totally in person. The second cohort, the first third was in person, and then we had to pivot to virtual. But this cohort has from beginning to end been, been a virtual cohort because of the pandemic. And we were a bit apprehensive prior to that because we said, oh my God, dude, how do you think it's gonna work out? You know, so May and I, you know, discussed, how do you think it's going to work out? Um, you know, how, how are we gonna be able to maintain engagement? How are we gonna be able to main, maintain enthusiasm when they're gonna be nine sessions virtually, you know, seven hours every Saturday, once a month. And their team meetings are going to be virtual, you know. And so we said, well, we don't know, but if these are the kind of leaders we think they are, based on their profiles and their interviews, they'll be able to pull it off. And they did. They did. This has been a, an, it's a diverse team. Um, you'll see here when we go through the profiles later on, they're quite different, remarkably different from their, you know, their backgrounds, their experiences, uh, age, ethnicity, you name it. Um, they have different personalities. There's some that are very outgoing personalities and some that are quiet personalities. But you know what? They all blended together and made it work. They went through their forming, storming, norming, and performing team process. And they named themselves Team Mizan, which means the balance, which we thought was beautiful and appropriate given their tremendous diversity. And they navigated some difficulties as well because um, they, had, they had some challenges they had to overcome um, and they did it with grace and resilience. So my, my, I have just totally enjoyed being with this group from beginning to end and now as, um, I think Hibba said it's bittersweet that 
you know, you're graduating and we won't be with you every month, but I'm looking forward to what you're going to do after this cohort based on the wonderful friendships that you have built with one another. And I'm praying that you and the previous cohorts will also form together and make this ISBLI fellow network a mighty force. All I could say to that, Tarek, is amen. And I want to be, give a big, big shout out to Lola. Uh, she was um, the behind the scenes person, but she was the glue that, that made our program successful. She kept us on track. Um, she's just uh, absolutely incredible. And we're so lucky and blessed to have her from KSU to help us navigate and keep us straight with the ISBLI. So Tariq, uh, I thank you because you're amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better partner to uh, take on ISBLI. And I feel so blessed and so honored to work with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, the feeling is mutual. Uh, this, this has been a labor of love, it really has been, uh, so. Now I think we hear from our coaches, right Tariq? Yes, next we're going to hear from the project coaches. And we talked about earlier, the, um, the team came up with the name Team Mizan to, to, to uh, as an appropriate description that they all agreed upon for their, their project, the name Balance. And we're going to ask um, Mehreen Siddiqui and Muzaffar Qureshi, who are the, who the, the coaches of this particular project, to give some comments on the team and also a bit on the background of the group project that they did with Amana Academy Charter Schools. Well, welcome everyone. It's your graduation. How exciting is this? This is finally here. It's the day moment that you all have been waiting for, and we've been working through it for the last, I think, 10 months. Is it, isn't that what someone said? It was 10 months. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you from the time that you came in. You came in as, and I want to remind you that you're, you're elite group. It's not everyone who reaches out and realizes they want to work on their leadership. And that's what you took on here. And you embraced it. And you went through the all the ebbs and flows that we went through. Sorry, there's a, I don't know if you could hear the loud airplane. Uh, and so the, from taking the project, a project that we were um, helping a community of, of a school system and helping them expand themselves into West Atlanta and then later future um, into East Atlanta. And what you're doing and you embraced in what you're doing it was building a community for those, for those who may not have all the privileges, but you are creating that um, structure that they will have so that they can step in and immediately hit the ground running, um, start running their school system and really start serving their, the community, the children that are there. This is what you took part of. And it was an amazing journey watching you all grow throughout. And yet, as uh, uh, Brother Tharik had mentioned, there were some times where we went through some challenges, but through, I would say grace and ease, you all came back together, get more clarity on it, right? We've talked about those four, four pillars of self-leadership, gaining that clarity, having that self-confidence that you can do it and we can do it together, building the connection amongst yourselves, getting to know one another, who can take on what, what skill sets do we have, building that connection and being committed, right? Being committed to the journey, the, the project that you're going towards. And that's what you all have demonstrated and that's what you're taking forth with you. As um, um, uh, Brother Nabil had said, it's a responsibility now you have, right? I, was, I think about all the graduations we've gone through, whether it's high school, college, it's a scary feeling like, okay, this is it. So now what? Now what? Now you get to choose what you want to do with it. You are all leaders in yourself, whether you're with your family, with your friends, whether it's your work. And you can now take this um, learning that you've had during this journey and really apply it to what works for you, what works for your community. And we, we are so excited to see what you're gonna do in the future. We wanna stay in touch with you. We wanna see you come back when we have our future gradu graduations and hear about the accompli accomplishments that you've created for yourself. So congratulations to you. I'm really gonna miss all of you. Do stay in touch. This is not the end. This is talk to you soon. All right. Maureen, well said, thank you so much. Um, so let me just provide some, some additional comments. 
Um, you know, many years back, I had an opportunity to meet a very famous golf golfer. His name is Gary Player, and he said something to me that stuck out in my mind. Okay, he said, "The more I practice, the luckier I get. The more I practice, the luckier I get." And it really stuck out because it's it was it wasn't just about practicing golf, right? It was life, work, all these things and taking control of your life, right? Um, we, we are destined to do the things that we do based on the work that we put in. For the last 10 months, you've all been involved. I mean, the, just think about all the things that you experienced over the last 10 months. I'm mean, incredible, the work that I saw you put in, the experiences that you uncovered were unbelievable and you got through it amazingly. And I could not be more proud of this team. I could not be more proud of Maureen as well, just supporting you all the way through uh, you know, at the last minute, all the different changes that you encountered. You're going to use this to catapult yourself to the next level. Take control of your life. All this work means nothing unless you do something with it. You've practiced, you've practiced, practiced. And I guarantee you, you're going to have success. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And I wish you much success. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you for your comments, um, Coach Mahreen and Coach Muzaffar. And now we're going to ask for the team to present their group project. Again, as was said, this was a, a project and just the way that the ISB Leadership Institute is built, the ISB Alive, Every cohort has projects uh, from nonprofit organizations that have submitted proposals to the ISBLI uh, planning team, projects that uh, of value and of functionality that they submit for the team to undertake. And this project was accepted for Amana Charter Schools, Amana Academy, and uh, ISBLI 2022. Team Mizan has done this particular project. So Cody and team will turn it over to you to present. Wonderful. Uh, thank you everyone um, for being present today. And it's our pleasure to present uh, the, uh, the flower that we have been nurturing all this time that has bloomed. So uh, my name is Cody Whalen, uh, one of the two project co-leaders for Team Mizan. And as uh, our presenters have shared before, uh, we chose the word Mizan to reflect balance. And it reflects a core value of our team to collaborate and support each other, as well as our desire to support the Amana Academy staff and having the essential information and tools they need to comfortably and confidently fulfill their mission in serving the community. It is my pleasure to introduce the project we've been working on for the past several months in coordination with AHAB and other Amana Academy leaders. And in our brief demonstration today, we'll review the project scope and deliverables, which shall be presented by various members directly involved in those tasks. And as we get started, it's also my pleasure to introduce the fellow project co-lead Kathleen Kirk and the many talented members of Team Mazan that have contributed to this project's success. Okay. Our mission was to evaluate and improve the internal processes to support Amena Academy's opening of their central office and new sites as they expand their impact across the Atlanta area. Our scope was twofold, to streamline Amena Academy's standard operating procedures or SOPs and their intranet or the doc. Nishay? Our approach to the standard operating procedures was to take elements of a process, which outlines the steps of what needs to be done to achieve the desired outcome, and add details such as specific assignments, including the who, what, when, and where of the project, and workflows in correlation with the MANA standards. After consulting with the MANA Academy staff, the following deliverables were deemed our priority tasks, the hiring process, school tours and procedures, and shutdown procedures for extended breaks. Miriam? In doing so, we have benefited and made impact in several ways, such as time reduction for future SOPs, a standardized structure or template for replication to keep uniformity, 
organization that gives step-by-step -step process that is easy to follow, and last but not least, efficiency that allows to create more SOPs without a lengthy process. Mohammed? Yes, for scope two, the DOC 2.0, deliverables were to perform a quality check, uh, do a competitive audit, and inform the users of the changes. Uh, the impact was an organized internal hub, a more convenient layout, an updated design, and shared resources between both campuses. And now we'll have a video by Sarah. Hello and welcome everyone to the Amana Academy Doc 2.0. The welcome page begins with a welcome in various languages as a nod to Amana Academy's diverse and inclusive environment. Next, we have what it means to be part of the crew and all the amazing contribution that a crew member makes day in and day out. Next, we have the North Fulton Campus button and the West Atlanta Campus button. On clicking on these buttons, the user will be linked to the specific campus's homepage. The reason for having a welcome page is to create a shared space for both the campuses. We also have the Amana Academy vision, mission and approach and their website. What you will notice in the new doc is the design. The design inspiration was right there in front of us. The Amana Academy external website was so bright and so vibrant that we couldn't help but bring that energy and vibrancy to the internal site. Next is the North Fulton Campus Internet's homepage. What you will see here is a new edition of a sub request form and the FCS employee discounts and perks right on the homepage as requested by the stakeholders. We also have the Amana Academy calendar and Twitter account linked on the homepage. The West Atlanta campus homepage is a replica of the North Fulton campus homepage. What we will recommend is linking the specific West Atlanta campus links to this homepage to make it a working homepage. We are now on the human resources section. What we have added here is clear verbiage for the purpose of clarity and organization. The user will immediately know what they're looking at and hopefully what the next steps are. We have also fixed broken links along the way and included page numbers to the Amana Employee Handbook, just in case they want to read up more about that specific section or plan. For the teacher resources and for facilities and technology, we created new icons. They're all aligned with the Amana Academy's external website. Here we are on the facilities and technology page. I'm just going to scroll through so you can see the new icons that we have created. Last and not the least, uh, another page that we included is the standard operating procedures. We have a video that explains what exactly an SOP is. Next, we have the hiring SOP flowchart and the tool procedure SOP flowchart. We hope that you have enjoyed this tour of the DOC 2.0. Please know that all the changes have been created only after surveying the users, knowing what's out there, and doing a quality check of the current DOC. We have also had multiple meetings with the Director of Communications and other Amana Academy stakeholders. Thank you for listening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to work with a school like Amana Academy, whose vision to build a better world by training their students to possess a healthy balance of intellect and ethical character is what we support 
and fully believe in. So thank you for the opportunity and thank you for all the support. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Akib, and I would like to express that in summary, since, since Amana Academy is undergoing an exciting shift to a central office and a second location, which presents challenges and opportunities in terms of standardizing procedures and communication. In order to support that, we created a standardized SOP template and applied it to several existing ones. We also sought input regarding their internal intranet, AKA the doc, and provided a revamped interface that would support all locations. Here are a few future recommendations. Number one being reviewing the existing SOPs as well as streamlining future SOPs with the template our team created. Furthermore, conducting quarterly audits of the intranet, AKA the doc, to ensure links and resources continue to operate seamlessly. Also, other recommendations are summarized in the recruitment best practices document we provided, such as the use of pipeline programs, mapping out timelines, thorough data collection, and more. Furthermore, to receive ongoing feedback from staff to ensure job satisfaction, as well as the fielding and implementing of any ideas or questions, oh and along God. those lines, sending out occasional reminders regarding benefits and perks that staff have access to. Also, enabling the doc, the internal intranet, to be the staff's homepage to help ensure better accessibility to various resources. And last but not least, a, fre a frequent line of communication between leadership and the crew regarding the doc, especially since Amana is expanding. And in terms of communication, we recommend keeping the crew notes concise so it could be, a so it could be used as a reference throughout the process of expansion. Kate? We want to take a moment to share special thanks to Ahab Jalil, Missy Rahman, Nikki Fox, Karen Autry, the Amena Academy, and ISB program leadership for their extensive time and support throughout this initiative. We would now like to open up the floor for any questions that my fellow team members and I can field. Thank you all very much. Hey, and team Cody, I don't see any questions. However, we, we see in the chat, awesome job. That's impressive work, great job. Wow, such a complete, compressive approach. Uh, awesome work, really impressive work. And the list goes on, so great. I think somebody just unmuted themselves and they had a question, Mary. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Um, I did have a question. I also worked with the Amanda team, and I wanted to know how the alumni project is linked to this current project with the different school Mary, we lost your sound. Can you hear me? Did you hear my question? No. How is the alumni connected to this current project. I worked with the Amana project in 2019. So I was just curious if there was uh, any area on the new hub for alumni engagement. Still can't hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Mary. I think did you, hear my, did you hear my question? Yes. Oh, okay. Yasmeen, I think Yasmeen has uh, her hand up as well. Go ahead. I'm happy to, oh, go ahead. My apologies. I think she's gonna answer. She can answer first and then I'll, I'll ask my question. Um, okay. I guess it, my apologies. Um, Mary, thank you so much for your question. And it's so exciting to meet someone, uh, meet a fellow ISBLI fellow um, uh, who's also participated. Uh, this project, um, is separate. Our understanding is it's uh, somewhat separate from the alumni 
initiative that your cohort worked on. Um, that said, I'm not sure if perhaps there was, uh, I know you mentioned if the doc included a space for alumni, and so I'm happy to open it up um, to my colleagues that worked on the doc if that would um, if that would be helpful. Um, Sara or Mohammed, would you, or Akib, would you be willing to provide any insight? Um, thank you for your question, Mary. Um, so I am with Kate. Uh, we did not work with any alumni, at, although that would be uh, an, op an awesome option in the future for future ISBLI projects. So thank you for the recommendation. You're welcome. Thank you. And congratulations. It's me. Yeah, so assalamualaikum, everyone. I'm also a graduate from 2019. I just grabbed my plaque. This is my 2019 ISBLI plaque, if you can see it. I keep it next to my desk all the time as a thing that I'm proud of. One of the questions I had was, um, I wanted you all to tell me some examples of ways that you applied what you learned with ISBLI with this project. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Um, I would like to open it up to my fellow colleagues here to see if there are any initial insights. I'd like to hear from my colleagues if possible. I would like to say that um, you learn new skills that you didn't think you have, uh, learn, explored a lot of things. And I, and I think I have learned a lot just to how to work as a team with different uh, expectations with different schedules and just go, uh, like you said, you know, cohesively. So I think that, and also is gaining new set of skills, which I didn't think I have. So that's something I learned in this program. Uh, I guess I'll go next. Um, for me, it was also team building and um, self-confidence. Um, uh, I think the information that I uh, gathered from um, the project and the courses that we took uh, influenced me in a positive way to uh, be more confident and uh, also work on my team building skills. So I think those those two um, was the most uh, important to me. I'll just add um, for the portion I worked on, um, definitely learned a new skill. I've never um, even said the words SOP so much in my life. <laughs> um, so uh, going forward, I now understand how important that is to the process of any organization. Really, that's the seed towards the success. So um, being able to take that skill and now implement it in different settings is, is a new skill. Cody? Um. Yes, thank you for that question, um, by the way, because uh, this has been a journey uh, in, in the sense of like struggle and striving and thriving now. Um, one thing that uh, going to what Tariq was mentioning in the beginning about how this cohort was a completely virtual cohort. Uh, some members did, um, some members did gather, but by and large because of everything going on, just everything going on. Um, we really didn't have that space to, to meet in person. So it really, we had many opportunities to lean into communicating and checking in more often than I think maybe folks may do when you meet regularly, because you might have a little small talk before a meeting or after a meeting, but with a Zoom conversation, it's uh, you click in, you're on, then you click off and you're done. But Coach Mahreen, um was great and, um, uh, the word alignment now has a new meaning in my vocabulary because there was a lot of like clarity and alignment. So we just really uh, came together as a team. There was a point, honestly, there was a point in the beginning where we were trying to find momentum and it was just, we were, you know, trying to find our footing and our rhythm. And then something clicked. We found whatever that Rubik's Cube configuration was. We got our communication in and we found the roles that aligned with us. And once that happened, that ball went rolling. Uh, so I really appreciate the team and I really appreciate Coach Mahreen uh, in supporting us because there were, yeah, it was a journey, but um, we, we didn't just survive, we thrived and here we are, so. Congratulations and thank you for answering. 
Great. Wow, that was uh, very powerful. Very powerful. Thank you all for your questions and for the beautiful replies. We appreciate that. I think it enriched, it enriched both Tariq and me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker. And it's no other than Ann Kramer, the Ann Kramer of Atlanta. Ann Kramer is a mover and a shaker. If anything is happening in Metro Atlanta, I'll bet you anything, Ann's finger is in it and it's all over it. Whether it's in the civic arena, whether it's in the political arena, uh, anywhere at all, Ann is part of it. We're honored to have her with us this morning. I know you all have heard about her, heard from her, but I want to turn it over to Anne and hear her thoughts and, and her wisdom and her message to us this morning. Anne? Oh, so Maya, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so humbled when I look at these two screens and see the amazing people who have just completed the ISBL. LI class and those who are my friends from long term, which are many on this on this amazing call. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Samaya, for both giving me this opportunity and for leading ISB and now third class of ISBLI. To each of you, whether you have been the coach, the mentor, the, the coach, the mentor, the teacher, and especially those who graduated 18, 19, or 20 at all the groups, congratulations. What I'd love to share with you, and frankly, you all have already said it, each speaker has sort of lifted up the charge and the challenge to each of you. And that incorporates even to me, I think about it every time I'm a part of any kind of graduation or passing on the baton ceremony, that what I'd love to share is sort of three things. First, for you all to remember why you said yes to ISBLI. What is it that attracted you and what was your reason? The second are some, some secrets of success that you can take with you. I love that question too, Rita, when it was asked about uh, what did you learn and what was the experience? How did, what are you gonna take with you? But some secrets for you to claim as you move forward. And then of course, no little speech is done without charge and challenge, giving you some more things to think about and the role you play as you move on in your life journey. Okay, so first, now why did you say yes? If you'll remember when you were completing the application, what was it that sort of got you thinking, this is something that I'd like to invest my time is, and I love it, Cody, as you were just saying, this was all virtual. So this was a commitment. Seven hours whoo, online. I mean, you all just get the big stars in your crown just for sitting for that long. So think, what was it? What was the vision? And I happen to know, having been so gratefully involved with ISB for years, I know that ISB had a vision for you that you had an expectancy. They were looking for you to bring your gifts and skills to learn together as you talk about teamwork, collaboration, cooperation, and working as a group. That vision. One of my favorite theorists is a professor at Yale. His name is B.H. Room. I always think it's onomatopoeic. And he had created an expectancy theory and for me, I have used that almost as like my journey theory. The objective, and I love how you say SOP and you have the MBOs and all the kind of strategic thinking of management systems. The expectancy theory is more than a plan of how do you get things done. To me, it's how do you live your life? What is your vision? What is your expectancy? What is your journey? And so I'd like for you to think right now for yourself, why did you say yes? What was your vision for this experience? And then what will you take with me? Personally, and Carol knows this, when I did my own um, Christian confirmation, I realized very early that my own life's vision was to be a part of a community in which every child, we always say this again, every child, this is when I was 12, every child would be able to grow up in a community in which that child was safe, healthy, educated, connected, employable, 
so that that child could be a contributing interdependent person in our world. And so that became my vision statement. And consequently for you, I hope that you can remember, restate, and now live into the why you came to this experience. What was your vision? Was it fulfilled? What was your expectancy? What were the de desired results? Think about that. And as you think about that, now that you have this kind of, I love it, the certificate that can sit, there's some things that I'd love to share with you. The and is that for many of us, the whole essence of what um, we say about where you sit now that you have a diploma, it's not so much where you sit at the table, but we found out it's on what you stand. Your foundational, your foundational values, your basic beliefs, and the who you are. Years ago, I was asked to serve as a public member on the board of professional engineers and land surveyors for the state of Georgia. As a white woman, and the other people were all white men, and I did not go to Georgia Tech, and I did not have an engineering degree, I was a no person. So I was sitting not at the table, but at the side seats at the back of the room. But I was a member of that board. And I realized all the way that those guys, I hate to tell it, you two guys, but those guys didn't know how to run a meeting. So one day when I got there early, I decided to sit at the head of the table. And I sat at the head of the table and ran. They said, what are you sitting there for? And I said, well, I know how to run a meeting. And they said, well, if you think you can, go for it, girl. And I did. And I ran a great meeting. It was on time, on task, on target. Everyone got to talk, we got everything done. It was a fabulous meeting. So I became the chair of the Board of the Professional Registration for Engineers and Land Surveyors because I was willing to sit at the head of the table. But of course, what I realized long into that, it wasn't where I sat, it was on what I stood. Those values, the foundational values of trust, respect for every human being and living into the world of justice mercy and peace. And it's on those values on which you have sat this year. So then you are moving out strengthened upon which you stand. And it's so much fun for me to think about you not sitting anymore, not sitting for seven hours on virtual calls, but standing in the community on the values that you have been so ensconced in as a collective, as a collaborative, as a group learning to work together and taking that energy into the world. And so with that, I'm gonna sort of give you those, shh, those secrets to success. And these we have learned and they, nothing new. I'm looking at Plemon. Plemon, you could repeat this with me or ahead of me as your own secrets of success. Because isn't it the first one? to have meaning in your life, to have that source, the fuel from which you are driven and have those foundational beliefs, the purpose that enables you to move forward. Purpose and passion are the two basic foundational values with your beliefs that can push you into the action that you want to take. The second, okay, you're going to hear me say this over and over and over. Terry Tyson knows this too. It's not about managing your time. We all have 24 hours. That's the only thing we all have the same of, but it's how you manage your energy, what fuels you, what drains you, what gives you the ability to move on and to begin to know that and to live into that. Take the time, manage your energy not your time. Again, you cannot manage time, time is. You have to manage you. The third thing, my favorite here, is to have a positive frame. Okay, now that's not naive, that's not Pollyanna, that's not just not knowing. Positive framing is indeed seeing the glass half full, but learning from whatever could have been negative, 
and moving that into the what do we do about it? What action can we take? Another one of my favorite things is uh, I've been known to cuss a little. I cry a lot. I have, I get angry. I'll get in the car and I'll say, why don't people do this? Why don't they make something? So positive framing. I get in the car. I say to God, yes, I say to God, why don't you do something? And so every time when I get to that point of going, God, I'm frustrated. Why don't you do something? Guess what, God, she says. She says, Anne, I did do something. I created you. And so therefore, in my positive framing is I have a choice. I can continue to cuss and cry and have an ulcer. And I don't want to do that. Or positive frame and say, okay, Anne, I can either do something. I can not do something and let it go. Or I can continue to sit here and be miserable. So in that case, I say, my positive framing allows me to make choices about how to move forward out of the rut into the journey of life. The fourth area is connecting, and you all have done this so beautifully, it's finding those personal teams, the people. And I love reading in the chat, this is not the end, it's the beginning of the relationships. You may not see each other as regularly, but you, are now a connected team, the personal connections. I have a group of friends that I've, I've had forever, literally my lifelong friends, and we're getting ready to have our high school reunion this May, and I'm doing the name tag so I can connect, connect. And I have a group of friends in Atlanta for which I meet every six weeks, no matter what. Connecting, personal connecting within your faith community, within your neighborhood, wherever, but the fifth one is equally as important, engaging. Engaging is your community impact, where and how you can connect your values, your energy, your ideas into action within community. Direct service, board service, advocacy, volunteering, being engaged, finding a place where you can make a difference. So, okay. If you're thinking about why were you here, what was your vision, your expectancy, what then do you want to do about it? Living into that whole idea of it's not where you sit, but on what you stand and moving into, I love it, to think about what is your meaning? How do you manage your energy? How do you frame all these issues in terms of a positive solution? Being in, connected with people and engaged in community now we see sort of the charge and challenge. Where do you fit? How do you make a difference? For all of us, it's the whole essence of what we know about from Gandhi. And I always think about his words, especially at a time like today, because you are the epitome of this. You've had the year to think to do your action with Amana, and I love Amana, it's one of my favorite schools, and you've been able to create a new community. But when we think about the words again of Gandhi's truth, we hear your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. So as you're sitting here today, remembering why you said yes, loving the people with whom you've had the experience and thinking and praying and dreaming about what's next. I wanna sort of close with one of my favorite stories. And many of you have heard of it, but it always rings true, especially on a day like today, where we have such an amazing group of people We've made a decision to be, to be together, stay together, and hopefully act together with their voice, with their volunteering, using their values, and of course, voting, yes, as a part of an engaged citizen. So to you, I'm going to tell the story about, and okay, Samaya, this is for you and me. There was a small village in Africa, and in it, there was a wise, old, not Samaya, but Anne, old woman. 
And she was pretty respected for having wisdom to which some people would go to her and ask her advice. Well, I, I think it's this class. There were some young whippersnappers. They'd been along, they had learning, they were, they were now, they were up there. And they were gonna sort of challenge that wise woman since now they thought they were so smart. And they were gonna go to her house, ask her one simple question. And no matter what she answered, they figured she would be wrong. And therefore they could go back and say, ha ha, she's not so smart. We should be the wise people in our community. So here it is, simple question. They were gonna take a little bird, put it in their pocket and ask her if the bird was dead or alive. Because they figured no matter what she said, if she said the bird was dead, they could let the bird come right out of their pockets and say, see, nope, the bird's alive. If she had said the bird was alive, eh, they could do the converse and say, squash the life right out of that little bird, pull it up and say, see, you're wrong. The bird's dead. So you get it? They were gonna be right, she was gonna be wrong, dead or alive. Okay, so you got, they got a little bird and put it in their pocket and walked up to her little cottage door. So Maya, you can hear them, they're knocking on your door and you come out and say, hi guys, I'm so happy to see you. Congratulations on your ISBLI graduation. Y'all are so brilliant. And they say, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. But we do have one question for you. But she said, but come on in, you'd like a glass of water? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. We're gonna stand right here, straight as arrows. I can see you, I can see you asking the question, just saying, we have a bird in our pocket and we would love for you to tell us, is that bird dead or alive? Hmm. She looked at them with love and wisdom and in her eyes at theirs, seeing those precious faces. And as she thought about, is this bird dead or alive? She stood on her foundational values. And in responding, she looked at it and said, is this bird dead or alive? She said, you know, take another look. The fate of the bird is in your hands. And so with that, the bird wasn't dead or alive. The young people were still in control, but her wisdom had allowed that faith to be expanded, to let the bird go and to recognize that indeed, God did create you. And the fate now that you are graduates of ISBLI is gratefully in your hands. Congratulations to each of you. I trust, believe, and know that you are the ones for whom we can be grateful. And thank you for your hands, your heart, and your head. Thanks. Wow, thank you, Anne. Thank you. There are a lot of a lot in the chat. Everybody's very appreciative of, of your wisdom and what you shared with us. Thank you, uh, Rita Wibbler. Uh, put a document about managing your energy for everyone to uh, use, and um, this is something that I am personally taking away is managing my energy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. it's very blessed to have you. Thank you, Tarek. I think we're turning it over to you because you're going to do some magic and introduce each of our graduates in yes, your I own know. very special way. And this is something I am looking forward to, let me tell you. Well, no, I'm, I just want to thank you, Anne. That story is uh, amazing. And the life that you put into it had us hanging on every word. That's another technique for leadership, outstanding leadership. So we, we all get to see that example and that modeling. So thank you. So now we are coming to the recognition of the ISBLI 2022 fellows, 2022 cohort. So this is, this is amazing. So what I'm going to do is announce each of the graduates in alphabetical order in alphabetical order and give a brief description and also share some of the comments that your classmates have shared about you and what you mean to them. 
and how you influence them. Don't have time to read them all, of course, but there are at least two or three that I'm going to read and share with you. So our first graduate, and again, this is in alphabetical order, is Heba, Heba Abu Saad. Yay, Heba. Heba is an Arabic certified court interpreter and translator and an Arabic certified medical interpreter and translator. She defines herself as a cultural educator with a passion for helping businesses and organizations better communicate and understand the cultural barriers and opportunities between Arabic speaking and American people. She was educated in Egypt in the United States and she provides interpretation and translation services while modeling and communicating values of community, integrity, respect, and trust. Her teammates said Heba showed great strength, versatility, and resilience as she did her best to support the team despite external obstacles, including becoming ill. And she, but she, she demonstrated a, a fierce determination to overcome obstacles. She's a very caring and loving person and always willing to help. Hiba, congratulations on your graduation as an ISBLI 2022 fellow. Thank you so much. I, I I'm speechless and yes, it's like, it's sad, but as, 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 um, uh, uh, as Carol put it, you know, the best thing is uh, like we think about it as the beginning. I think, um, I think I put it even when I wrote something about my reflection that, like the program, I didn't know what to expect from the program. I'm glad and lucky that I ended up in that program, and the people in this program, whether staff, organizers, the team everyone, I couldn't dream of meeting better people than everyone whom I met with this program. So thank you so, so much. And it's, it's I don't know what to say. <laughs> I didn't expect to be the first one, so I just didn't know what to say. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. So the next graduate is Miriam Ahmed. Miriam is married and the mother of three. By profession, she is an educator, currently teaching with one of the local academies. Miriam completed her Bachelor's of Business Administration and Management from UNG and has taken courses in non-government, nonprofit government organizational management, NGO management. Miriam's goal with ISBLI is to gain skills and network collaboration to create more programs for our communities where they can work together and learn how to be more effective leaders. Her teammates said, Miriam has a beautiful light about her that has the capacity to instantly lift your spirits. She has such a big heart and spirit. And another one described her she is a hyper personality with a soft touch. Congratulations, Miriam. Thank you so much. And I'm going to cry, but uh, <clears throat> yes, I'm a crier too. But thank you so much, everybody. Uh, it was a wonderful program. I, I'm honored to be a part of this program. I have learned so many things. I've made good friends and hopefully friends forever. I love serving people. My mission, my purpose is to bring light, peace, and humanity back in this world, which we are missing these days. And uh, my, my destiny, of which I hope to fulfill, is to bring as many people together, build the bridges, and to make this world a better place to live for our future generations. So thank you all for the coaches, the team, Sumaya, Brother Tarek, uh, Coach Maureen, Muzaffar, and all of you, all the teachers. I still remember Rita, Kimberly, all of you are here. It's good to see you all. Uh, thank you so much. My team coaches, Cody and Kate, always been there. My team uh, mate, Nishé, was always there, and all of others. Thank you so much. And again, it was an honor to be here. Thank you, Miriam, and congratulations. Mohammed Harasadeen. Mohammed is a skilled IT support analyst with 
many years of experience in providing technical solutions through high quality service and support for organizations such as Hewlett Packard, Kaiser Permanente, the state government and the US Army. He's demonstrated talent in communicating technical skills to non-technical end users, analyzing complex problems and creating innovative solutions. He has experience in assisting companies during infrastructure migrations, as well as a relocation of company network infrastructure. His teammate said, Mohammed is polite and his IT expertise greatly enhanced our project. He's a brilliant person when it comes to the tech stuff for the presentation and a talented and hardworking family man. And the team said they loved meeting your children. Mohammed, congratulations. Thank you. And this uh, whole process has uh, greatly improved my life. Uh, as I stated in the um, a reflection, uh, I uh, pursued this with the recommendation of my wife, uh, who is a graduate also. And um, she said it would greatly improve my uh, leadership ability and uh, during this process, I assumed a, a new leadership role, which um, doing this uh, program in line with this program helped me improve a whole lot um, with my leadership skills and confidence in my own leadership. So this this couldn't this whole program couldn't have been more timely for me for myself, um, and I'm I'm grateful to uh, have spent time uh, with the individuals who I work with uh, on this project, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mohammed, and congratulations. And again, bear in mind, these are comments that are real, actual comments from, from the teammates, from everyone. And um, one of the things I can say, it's very obvious there's a lot of not only respect for one another, but actual love. And you can feel it in the statements themselves. So the next fellow is Sarah Kareem. Sarah is the co-founder of Atlanta Muslim Hub an organization that brings Muslim small businesses, community members, and sponsors together for events that showcase the creativity, diversity, and vibrancy of the Muslim life in Atlanta. Sarah earned a Bachelor of Business Administration and Management degree from the University of Wollongong in Dubai. She is also the brand and digital strategist, strategist for ISB Atlanta. Sarah's mission is to build digital platforms that women of the next generation, like her daughters, will use to transform their creative business ideas into successful ventures. Her teammate said, Sarah is a very kind, thoughtful, professional, and dependable teammate. She's a very sweet, loving, and caring person with soft-spoken words. And one of the teammates said, I strive to be as kind as her, a gentle and loving leader. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you, Brother Tariq. Uh, truly, I don't deserve any of those <laughs> words. And I'm so grateful for this experience. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to lead, to work together as a team and to discover my strengths. So I'm so grateful to everyone here. Thank you. It has truly been a transformative experience for me. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. Our next fellow is Kathleen, better known as Kate Kirk. Kate is the Associate Director of International Student and Scholar Services at the Georgia Institute of Technology, Technology, AKA Georgia Tech. She earned bachelor's degrees in philosophy and music from Valdosta State University and a master's degree in musicology from Northern Arizona University. She is currently a PhD candidate in international conflict management at Kennesaw State University, focusing her research on the impact of international education on sustainable development work conducted through the global RCE network. Her teammate said that as, and she was co-lead with Cody Whelan as the team design co-leaders. And this was some, the team selected Kate and Cody to be their co-leads. So our teammates said that with Kate and Cody, we were in able hands always. Another said Kate's kind nature has helped us navigate any obstacles. 
She and Cody communicated and worked together as a unit, making them the dream team. And another says, she is so awesome. Congratulations, Kate. Thank you all so much. It's been such an honor uh, to be a part of this program. And I'm so humbled to be part of such an amazing group of individuals uh, here. I'm looking forward to maintaining and growing our relationships and meeting in person. I'm hoping to get that, get that going. So I wanna thank everyone, um, ISB leadership, uh, KSU, um, Tara McDuffie, um, Amena Academy, and all my fellow teammates. Thank you all so much. Thank you and congratulations, Kate. Next is Neshe Lowe, our next fellow. Neshe earned her BA from Clark Atlanta University in mass media arts journalism and her MA degree in international relations from Webster University. In between her studies, she has served in the Peace Corps in Jordan, taught English in Korea, and volunteered as an English mentor in Poland. Neshe is currently earning her doctorate in international conflict management at Kennesaw State. Pursuing research on political behavior, political will discourse, and intersectionality. Her interests include travel, dance, and spending time with lovers. Her team then said that Neshe is very understanding, accommodating, and easy to work with. Neshe has a bold personality. I love her sense of humor and her dedication to the team. She's been a wonderful teammate. Congratulations, Neshe. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't know I was bold, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but yes, uh, it's um, but been amazing getting to know everyone. Um, thank you everyone for your kindness and your support throughout this year. I know it's been trying for all of us in our personal lives. So just thank you for everyone's grace and compassion. And it's just humbling to be you know, with such a themed individual. So just thank you. I'll do my best to, you know, take everything here and do better. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Neshe, and congratulations. And it is interesting sometimes, you know, some your your peers and colleagues see you in ways some that, that you don't ordinarily perceive one yourself. So this is, this is why these comments from the teammates are, are such a wonderful uh, part of the program. Our next fellow is Carol Maddox. Carol Maddox describes herself as a lifelong learner. She is the founder and executive director of the Georgia Interfaith Public Policy Center. She graduated from Georgia State University with a degree in communication and a master's degree in healthcare policy and administration from Mercer University. She has a quarter of a century of experience in nonprofit management, the last 17 of which are at the executive level. She was ordained as a deacon in the Episcopal Church in 2006 and appointed archdeacon in 2011 for the Diocese of Atlanta, which encompasses North and Middle Georgia. Her teammates said, Carol brought a wealth of knowledge to the program that we were most appreciative of. Someone else said that she's very humble despite her extensive knowledge and years of experience. She's described as insightful and people have been inspired by her knowledge as well as her humility. Congratulations, Carol. Thank you. Uh, my family would be very surprised to find out I'm humble, <laughs> but I really appreciate all the kind words. And um, I just want to say that, you know, I started this program to hearken back to Anne's words about think about why we were doing this. Um, I started this program um, mostly to, to help the Georgia Interfaith Public Policy Center and and to um, you know, broaden skill set for that purpose. But I end the program with gratefulness in my heart for the incredibly kind and talented teammates I, I had and I traveled with on this journey. And it, I just want to let you all know that um, 
I admire each of you so much. And, and I really, and I mean it when I say, I will do anything I can to help you in any way in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Carol, and congratulations. Our next fellow is yes. Shamik Sahada. Sheikh Shamik, as he is affectionately called. And Shamik was born in Guyana, South America, came to the United States in 1996. He studied comparative religion, world religion, and theology at Broward Community College and studied Islamic science at Darul Uloom Institute in Hollywood, Florida. Since 2019, Sheikh Shamik has served as the Southeast Region Director for ICNA Relief USA programs, which is a, a, a national nonprofit that helps humanity within the United States. Sheikh Shamik has responsibility for the entire Southeastern region. He loves traveling and spending time with his wife and children. His teammates said of him, Shamik is very personable and charismatic. He brought a lot of professional experience with him to the program that was valuable to our leadership training. He's always willing to jump in and he always has the courage to speak his mind. He also listens. Congratulations, Shamik. Thank you very much. I don't know the listening part, my wife would say otherwise. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank each and every one of you. Um, you know, it was very challenging for me. Those of you who know me, I shared my story personally with Tariq and with Dr. Samaya, actually. Um, I couldn't help with a lot of things within the scope of our project. And that's because several adversity have hit my, me and my family along this journey. You know, I started it one way thinking that, you know, I know it all. And you know what, why do I need this leadership course? I mean, just taking it just because, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it'll just enhance my skills or something like that. But not knowing that when I started this journey and, and, and at the middle of it, being hit with so many things, just one after the next, like, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, some of the things that I went through within the last several months, it takes a lot of mental stability to do my work and to, you know, uh, be part of this and, you know, to just keep on keeping on. And this is what ISBL uh, class has taught me through this journey. I had to, you know, put my bravery, my, my, my brave armor on, and I had to fight life. And that's what this class has done for me and my family. And that not only personal, but I was able to take from this and implement it within my role as a leader in the Southeast, uh, in the eight seven states and all 24 employees and empower them. And, you know, my perception from where it is to where it is, from where it was to where it is now, it's a, it's a 360 degree uh, turn. And I really appreciate my teammate for stepping up and covering my back. You know, I know I didn't do a lot, but all of us fight a demon on a daily basis to accomplish the things and the goals and the dreams and the vision that we want to accomplish, you know, and I had to fight that demon inside of me, but I want to thank you guys for all the prayers and I want to thank you guys for all the, uh, you know, uh, for getting my back, my hindsight, as they would say, and want to thank, uh, you know, all of the leaders who have put together this program and allowing us and giving us that opportunity to grow and become a better person and a better leader. This is my first leadership class that it's gonna, I will always remember because of everything that happened. And from here, this is gonna propel me to do many things later on. And I'm looking forward to working together with Dr. Samaya and the entire ISBL leadership within my scope of work in a nonprofit organization and whatever way, shape or form I can help, you know, I will definitely, uh, you know, I, I will definitely be more than happy to help out. And Muzaffar Qureshi, I wanna thank you so much. We had uh, some one-on-one -on -one conversation and uh, you know it, all of these things have helped me so thank you guys very much and thank you my classmate for stepping up and doing things that i could not have done i really appreciate every one of you god bless thank you and congratulations muhammad 
Thank you. My screen popped up in front of me. Our next fellow is Akib Sahriar. Akib has recently, just recently relocated to New York. And we told him we're going to miss him so much because he's meant so much to us here in the Atlanta area. He was, he served as the Imam and spiritual guide at East Cobb Islamic Center, where he was the director of religious education. Prior to that, he was the area project manager for Helping Hand USA, a nonprofit charitable relief organization. Akib received his master's degree in religion from the Zachariah Institute of Knowledge and completed a postgraduate program in historical liturgy of the Quran. Akib describes his opportunity to work with people from all walks of life as a great blessing. He is very passionate about helping those that he works with and doing so with compassion, dignity, and respect. Akib's teammates were all almost universal in their saying, mentioning his kindness. He said, Akib is a kind and gentle soul, intuitive, full of quiet wisdom, a great listener, and always jumped in to help when needed. Akib adds value when he speaks. And again, they just salute him for his, his presence and his quiet, open, welcoming listening. Congratulations, Akib. Thank you so much, everybody. I mean, uh, so grateful to be uh, in this program and um, learning so, many, so much knowledge and being inspired and motivated from all of our teammates. Um, especially like for myself that when we first started, it was like the other way around, like how Shamik was explaining. Mine wasn't mine was the opposite where um, I was developing a little feeling of, uh, uh, of imposter syndrome. Like, am I really, am, am I really being, am I really a leader? Am I really able to, you know, as, as we're learning more things, the, these are things I have never applied before. So I'm like, am I really a leader or am I, am I really able to lead a community or wherever I am? So I think it's safe to say by the end of this program that a little, uh, that feeling has decreased a little bit of imposter syndrome. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, I myself can make an impact uh, to the world as well as my teammates. And, you know, we're, I think we'll be able to, because now we have uh, the confidence that, that that's instilled within us from the ISBLI program, from our coaches, from our teachers that are all here. Um, and, you know, we're so grateful to have learned and hopefully we keep learning like, um, like our, our, our fellow teammate, uh, Carol is, she's always learning and she's always so, so much knowledge, uh, mashallah. Um, and we hope to keep learning. We hope to keep growing and hopefully making an impact, whether, you know, in Atlanta or in New York. And if you guys are ever in New York, please, please reach out to me. And uh, hopefully we meet again soon in person. I am in New York right now. <laughs> All right. Let's meet up. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Congratulations, Akeem. And thank you. And last but not least. Cody, we have Cody Oyland, our who is the co-lead for Team Mizan. And it, Cody is a third year doctoral student, PhD student attending Kennesaw State University's International Conflict Management Program. Cody obtained a master's in conflict analysis and dispute resolution from Salisbury University. Cody was an AmeriCorps member serving Community Mediation Maryland as a mediator and restorative practices facilitator. His dissertation research examines how the inclusion of interpersonal, cultural dancing in peace building initiatives may promote healing, community belongingness, and reduce gender-based violence in post-conflict settings. His teammates said, Cody has proved to be a thoughtful and strong leader. As a team, Kate and Cody made the team always feel like we were in good and capable hands. Cody is very inspiring and motivating throughout the entire program as a project team, co-lead, and as a friend. And someone wrote that they feel welcome talking to Cody because he listens without judging. Congratulations, Cody. Thank you. Um, I, um, yeah, this is far more attention uh, than I ever feel comfortable with, especially seeing my face big on the screen. Um, and I thank uh, all of my team members because um, we were, we are a team 
and peers first and foremost. And it was a real pleasure uh, to, you know, um, to serve as a leader uh, to, and to co-serve with Kate. Uh, Kate, I can't thank you enough uh, for <laughs> sharing the mantle. And because uh, as you know, all of us have had our own challenges in this journey. And at the same time, we all have had each other through those challenges in this journey. And I appreciate everyone showing up as they are, being their genuine self and knowing that it's not about, did I do enough? It's just about showing up with you know where we are. And so thank you all for sharing your time, energy uh, and passion in this. And it's been a genuine pleasure. And Coach Mahreen, thank you so much. Um, through the many uh, late night WhatsApp uh, messages where uh, Akiba, I appreciate you mentioning imposter syndrome. Yeah, I have the mug and the t-shirt too. So it's really helpful to, <laughs> to know like in serving others, um, Kate and I never um, felt the pressure and need to think like, oh, we need to have the answers. It was all about preserving the space and wanting to make sure everyone's voices was acknowledged in this journey. And I hope that came through and um, by the project and what everyone's able to do. Um, we, it's our hope that you were able to flourish and, and see yourself grow in the ways you wanted to. And it was, again, a, a pleasure and a privilege to, to be a part of this journey with you. So thank you so much. And thank you, of course, uh, Tarek, Sumaya, and um, Rita as well. Uh, at the personal leadership book, um, it was wonderful being able to have a routine through a time of such disruption and uncertainty. Uh, it was, you know, it was like, you know, a commitment on a Saturday. However, it was consistent, it was predictable, and it provided stability. And so I'm actually going to miss that going forward, knowing there's going to be like a bi-weekly, you know, hey, y'all checking in what's going on or a once a month, um, you know, enrichment session and talking with other passionate speakers. So I look forward to staying in touch. Uh, and I um, appreciate Mahreen starting off saying it's not goodbye, it's uh, you know, till we talk again soon. So thank you all. Thank you, Cody, and congratulations. Everyone, please let us, please join me and Smeya and everyone in applauding this class of 2020 ISDLI fellows. Congratulations, everyone. Yay, yay. <laughs> wow, wow. <clears throat> what a morning, Tarek. This has been marvelous. Wow. Um, we have several of our faculty members here, and I would love for them to unmute themselves and just share their thoughts quickly uh, so we can end in time. Uh, so uh, we have Rita. Rita Rita has been with us since the very beginning. Rita, if you want to say a couple of words, that would be really awesome. Um, thank you all so much for being here and for being you. And um, I'm going to go with what the IOC presidents always say, you were the best cohort ever. <laughs> and uh, Kim. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations. Fantastic, fantastic group. Enjoyed you in both of my sessions. Wishing you the best. And I know our world is a better place because all of you connected in the same space and time, and you're going to take everything you've learned to two additional levels. So congratulations. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Uh, Terry. Good morning, everybody. It's been amazing to listen to all this and all the great work that you've done and uh, support you've given to your community already um, in your lives and in your work this year. But I, I will just say that the day I spent with all of you was certainly one of the most memorable of my past year. And um, I was deeply impressed with all of your engagement and your questions and um, your comments and your knowledge that you brought into the day we spent together. So all the best to you in the future. I look forward to staying in touch and helping you with whatever endeavors you choose next. So thanks to all. Thank you, Terry. All right, I think it's back to you, Nabia. We haven't missed anyone, right? Oh, yes, there's Amir, Amir. 
Yes, if I could, I just want to congratulate all of you. You know, I always say our life shrinks or expands to match the size of our commitments. And, and in the absence of some intention and intentional effort, we begin to shrink and focus on survival and focus on me and what's right with me and what's wrong with me, so on and so forth. And you all have put yourself out there and you have expanded your commitment to make a difference in the community. And therefore I can just see that your lives have already expanded and they're gonna to continue to expand. It's been my honor to be part of this journey with you and please do reach out if I can do anything for you. Congratulations. Thank you, Amir. Thanks. And thank you so much. All right, uh, Nabil, I think it's back to you. Wow, thank you so much uh, to all of you. Uh, you know, if anyone here is not touched, if their heart isn't opened and alight and warmed and humbled by the exhibition of incredible leadership and commitment. Um, geez, I don't know what could touch me more. You know, you, you always have an expectation going into an experience. And after hearing all the inspirational words, I'll tell you, I feel like I'm cheating because I didn't pay to show up to this ISBLI graduation. And it should be, you know, this is worth a lot. Um, you know, there is a tradition, an Islamic tradition from the Hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad says, all of you are shepherds and each of you will be asked concerning your flock. And this is a concept which is not limited to the Islamic tradition, I know. And geez, do I feel good to be part of your flocks because you are shepherds that I trust. I trust you to have my interest in mind, to have my family's interests in mind, to have our community's interests in mind. And Amir, I love what you said, you know, with your expanded commitment, commitment, your capacity expands. I'm impressed and inspired by the humility that you've all shown. There is a saying that's attributed to being a, a, a Swedish saying. Shared joy is double joy. Shared sorrow is half a sorrow. I want you to think about that. We all have difficult times and when we spread it with each other, you're relieving some of that sorrow. You're sharing with someone else and it diminishes. But when you have a joy and we all have shared joy and are celebrating not only this cohort's graduation, but the previous, I'm so proud of the previous cohorts that have shown up and I'm so happy to have seen your faces again. We're not just doubling we're joy by my participant list, we're multiplying it by at least 38 times and I believe it's exponential and even greater than that. So I'm gonna get out of your way real soon, but I just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your journey because I have gotten so much more out of it uh, than I've put in. And I'm humbled and impressed and inspired by this morning. May, as Imam Pleeman said earlier, may you be protected and may you be guided on everything you do and may you have blessings in all of your efforts. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Nabil. And just to, as a reminder, we're going to be recruiting for the next class. So keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Tariq. Thank you, class of 2022, class of 2020, class of 2019, all our amazing faculty, our speakers, Iman Pleeman, Nabil, and everyone. You made our day very special. A blessings to all of you, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. It was wonderful. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Congratulations. Bye. Congratulations. 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 Bye. 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 Congratulations. B